Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Disappeared the Abyss. I'm here with Alina. How are you doing tonight, Alina? Doing well. How are you? I am good. Tonight we are discussing the episode of Disappeared called Rosemary's Secret, and that gives away the person we're talking about tonight. Her name is Rosemary Christensen. And she's a 43-year-old woman who disappeared in 1999 from Bel Air, Florida. Now, Rosemary was an Australian and described as outgoing and friendly. She liked to socialize, and she also worked as a realtor near Clearwater, Florida. On August 26th of 1999, the day that Rosemary goes missing, it started like any other day for her. She drove to the local real estate firm for a daily meeting. As the day goes on, she receives the great news that one of her properties has sold. Now, she had won several awards in the real estate business, even though she'd only been in it for a couple of years. Uh, She had begun working in the business in 1997, just a couple of years earlier, shortly after she moved to the United States from Holland. In Holland, she was actually the wife of a diplomat, and before she moved to the U.S., she hit it off with a man that she had met online. And this man's name was Robert Glenn Temple. Now, he remembers that in the beginning of this talking stage, they were just friends. And he thought that she was lying about all these important political figures that she had met as the wife of a diplomat. And so he decides to make up a story of his own about how he was a secret FBI agent and that he owned several homes in different places. And when they finally meet up, though, he realizes that she was telling him the truth, and he says that he felt ashamed because he was lying and just some farm boy from Illinois is how he puts it. So eventually, Rosemary gets a divorce from her diplomat husband and starts pursuing a relationship with Robert. Now... This is kind of interesting because already, Alina, their relationship is getting off to an odd start here um, with some lies in terms of who she's actually seeing. Should that be a red flag? I just wonder how seriously he took the relationship in the beginning when she seemed to be pretty honest um, and tell him, yeah, about all the important political figures she had met and her life that maybe sounds too good to be true and it do get how maybe you'd be skeptical if you meet someone online and that's, you know, they tell you this. Um, But yeah, him telling all these lies too and then they meet up. um, It's not very clear how, I guess he realized, you know, she was, yeah, honest or telling the truth all along, but not sure if he came clean with her right away. If he did, I guess it wouldn't be that big a deal or did he, you know, keep the lies alive and... um, Did she find out eventually? When did she find out? You know, all that is kind of left up in the air, but definitely kind of unusual. I think today, yeah, many people meet online, but um, especially back in the day, you know, this was late 90s. But then um, also, you know, someone from the States, someone, well, Australian living in Europe or international relationship, very unusual way to meet. Definitely. Yeah, it was just interesting to me how quick Robert is to be able to lie to this woman. He, mm-hmm. he thinks that she's lying, but really she isn't. So after just six months together, they actually decide to get married and settle in in what is described as a quiet community there in Florida. Um, six months doesn't seem like a lot of time to me for them to get to know each other and really decide to get married, but that is what they do. So they live together in a condo, which Rosemary pays for. Rosemary's friends explain that they don't really understand the attraction that she has to Robert. After she sold the property that day that she was excited about at work, she celebrated the success and she actually was running through the parking lot to tell some coworkers that good news. And she was so excited that she tripped and fell and she skinned her knee. And this will become important later on. So the part of her job that she enjoyed the most was meeting with clients. Uh, she's a social person and seems to be well-liked. But her husband, Robert, explains that he sometimes followed her at night when she would meet clients because 
he worried about her safety. And this already, to me at least, was kind of setting off some alarms. It seems like perhaps there's some trust issues in the relationship because I couldn't help but think, is he really trying to protect her or is he just wanting to make sure that she's not doing anything that he doesn't like? Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Um, We see this in many cases. I mean, obviously right now, like we need to, we know she disappears and he is her husband. They haven't been together for all that long. So you naturally always look at the husband in cases like this and him, yeah, telling us this is, does sound unusual and makes me wonder, you know, is he trying to control the narrative and uh, possibly steer investigators to look at other people than himself, you know, maybe, oh, well, did she meet, like, shady clients, like, could somebody else be responsible for her disappearance, or like you said, um, you know, is he jealous? Is he controlling, like following someone? Like, did she want this? Did she express fear herself? He doesn't say that. So yeah, definitely some odd behavior here. And I wanted to mention too that I thought it was interesting, you know, with her friends expressing that they didn't really understand the attraction just from what we learn in this case, or what we know so far about the two, they sound like they come from very different worlds, not just, you know, culture wise or like, you know, they lived in different parts of the country, but, um, you know, being the wife of a diplomat, the kind of life she must have lived before sounds very different from where he's coming from. Um, yeah. And you do wonder, you know, like, wow, what is she going for here? Like, what does he have that her husband did in like this? And if her, even her friends, you know, didn't understand what he, uh, what the attraction was then yeah how how should we understand I guess but I wondered the same thing yeah on paper it, it really doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at 2 p.m five hours before she disappeared she had a meeting with clients so she took them to view several properties and at one of the homes she received a phone call that was up around 3 30 p.m it was her husband Robert he claims that she told him that she'd probably be working late because she got many properties that she wanted to um, show the clients and um, depending on how many she, they wanted to see, yeah, she could be working long hours that day. And half an hour later, she received another phone call and excused herself. At around 5.30 p.m., she apologized for the interruption and uh, wrapped up the appointment. So I'm assuming this time schedule comes from the clients that she met up with that day since, you know, it's not what she told police. Um, this was the last time Rosemary was seen and the next day one of her clients showed up at the office looking for her. Her co-workers say that it was unusual for her not to call in but they immediately think her absence uh, likely has to do with problems she had with her husband, Robert. So that that's the first thing they think about. It's rather telling. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I thought it was super suspicious because, you know, normally I feel like you would go to the husband to be like, where's your wife? Like, you know, you probably know what she's up to, but instead they're like, we are looking to you because we think you have something to do with this. Um, it just already, clearly there has been some sort of tension in their relationship that her coworkers are quick to point the finger at the husband, Robert, here. Yeah, and wouldn't you first think, like, oh, she's sick? Like, wouldn't you think of something else than him having to do with it? I guess it makes more sense knowing what they know. But, um, yeah, if, if you just hear it, it, it sounds suspicious. Exactly. Most of the day goes by, and they still didn't hear from Rosemary. Her co-workers were prepping for a company beach party the next day, and Rosemary failed to help as planned. She had asked an associate of if she could borrow a big bowl and it was sitting out there on Friday waiting for her to pick it up, but she didn't. So Friday was the day after she was last seen. Deep down, her friend and co-worker Kathy had a bad feeling about it because she knew how bad Rosemary's situation at home was and she thought maybe 
uh, Rosemary was avoiding them. A month earlier, Rosemary, ha Rosemary had told Kathy that they, and they being Rosemary and Robert, had domestic fights and that she sometimes didn't come to the office because she had a bruise that would show. And so they're... We have it, I guess. That's why they're immediately suspicious that he has something to do with it because she's told them about what happened before. Yeah, so that's... they might just think this is the situation again. You Sounds know, she pretty doesn't bad. want to be seen beaten up. Yeah. Robert states that he hates the fact that people think that he could ever hurt Rosemary. On Saturday, they fail to show up to the beach party, even though the year before, both of them as a couple attended the party. So it sounds like an annual thing. No one was able to reach her and her boss pages her multiple times throughout the day. They become more and more alarmed the longer they are unable to reach her. The next morning, Kathy and a co-worker are still worried about Rosemary, so they decide to head over to her condo to check on her. They notice that Robert's motorcycle and Rosemary's car are in the parking lot, and this makes Kate, Kathy wonder why her phone calls are, have gone unanswered if they're home. All the windows at the condo were closed, at, all the drapes were pulled, there was no way to see in. And so that was when they decide to call the police. When police enter the condo, they notice that the carpet was missing. And when her friend Laurel learns about that, she started to cry because she knew that the carpet was new. So I guess there wasn't a carpet, but there was supposed to be new carpet in there. And if that's missing, yeah, that's a huge red flag. I mean, I think most people that have seen some crime movie at some point get an idea what people use carpets for if people are missing yeah um yeah so especially if sign. it's um new carpet so they just put some money into this and there's probably not a whole lot of good reason to be tearing it right back up so definitely looking suspicious yeah. so rosemary's friends are pretty desperate and they start to call robert's family over in illinois and a friend spoke with a woman who told her that Robert was indeed in Illinois. And when she asked, is Rosemary up there with him? Uh, that The answer that she got back was asking if she had looked in the trunk of Rosemary's car. So this is not sounding good. This family member is asking if they've checked Rosemary's trunk for her body, essentially. So what do you make of that? It's very alarming. I mean, if either this is like a very rude family member that doesn't like Rosemary or Rosemary's friends and associates and is just messing with them, or they think, well, Robert is trouble, so she may be dead, and that's kind of what she's telling them. What do you make of it? Like, yeah, I couldn't really tell think? the context of, like, was she being sarcastic? Was this kind of, like, a joke? Was this yeah. more serious? Yeah. Because if... Weird joke. Yeah, it'd be a very weird joke to make, and I'm imagining if you're the friend who already isn't trusting Robert to begin with, this is probably sounding very suspicious and alarming. So we will get some more information soon after this because just moments later, Robert calls the friend back and she asks him where Rosemary is. And he gets upset and asked her if she left him. And he told her that she left Thursday night with some people and that's when he left town. So the story is getting a little uh, confusing because he says that she just left uh, but doesn't really say who some people are that she left with or really why she would have left we also know that their vehicles were still in the parking lot so this just is not really adding up it sounds like maybe he's just creating a story here or not a very convincing story about why she's gone what do you think it's odd yeah i mean at this point he doesn't say like who these people are um, I guess, I mean, she could have been picked up and didn't need her car, but then, yeah, you still wonder, like, how did he leave town? Maybe, we don't know his way of transportation, I guess, but his motorcycle he left behind. Um, 
And for me, it just brought back like bad memories from other cases where husbands have told the story of my my wife ran off with a lover or someone else and turned out later, you know, they killed them and were somewhere in the basement or wherever. But this is just not a very original story and we've heard it before. I mean, obviously it could be different in this case, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know don't either. Know. And I know that Rosemary's friend Kathy is not buying this either. He tells Rob or she tells Robert that he's lying and to stop telling her this kind of crap. And Rosemary's co-workers start looking for her around town and the police finally start to investigate the case. And they also start by trying to locate Robert. Now, they find out he is indeed in Illinois visiting some relatives, but they also find out that he's with another woman, Leslie Stewart, who's a 22-year-old. Uh, so, again, another red flag here. He's off with family, but also with this younger woman. Um, this just doesn't sound good for Rosemary. And I was just kind of shocked about the attraction, even though, yeah, we know about so many cases where women are into serial killers or whoever. So I guess nothing should shock me at this point, but it still does. I'm like, okay, why? Why are these women attracted to this guy who's obviously yeah, trouble and shady and yeah. Well, and it gets a little more shocking because we find out where Robert met Leslie. And it turns out they met working customer service at a phone sex and psychic hotline. The perfect combination right there, I guess, uh, one-stop yeah. shopping. Uh, according to Robert, the two of them had a lot of sex, and investigators then find a lot of cleaning products at Rosemary's apartment that were purchased the day after she went missing. Now, the supplies were purchased by Robert using Rosemary's credit card. So, again, if, if you didn't have enough red flags already, there are more here. We're having him evidence of him cleaning up the apartment. The carpet's already been torn up. There's these cleaning supplies, and they were bought with Rosemary's own credit card. Can we call this case solved yet? Yeah, I mean, at this point, I was like, seems open and shut. You know, we know. Maybe I'm too, I'm jumping on conclusions, but it's just, to me, if I was the investigator, I'd be like, we have him, you know? <laughs> what else do you need? Right. What's the likelihood? How is this ever a coincidence? Basically, you know? all of the arrows are pointing right at him right yeah. now, and it's... Uh... And also, if you, if you watch the video, it's just, you see him being interviewed, and he sits in prison, so... Yeah, exactly. These interviews with yeah. him are being done from behind plexiglass, because he's in prison. Um, so, you're starting to kind of put some of these pieces together, clearly. Um, you, they also take a look at what else he bought on that shopping spree. He purchased duct tape and a knife, and also a tote, a plastic bin essentially that was on wheels was the only item that investigators were not able to locate and looking at the plastic bin that he bought it looks perfect for putting in a body so robert does cooperate with police he comes down to florida to do an interview and authorities at the time say he is not a suspect robert left messages for Rosemary on their answering machine after her disappearance. And there's also a note that he leaves, and we'll read this. It says, Dear Rose, I was hoping to see you before I left, but I decided to go today instead of waiting until tomorrow. Tried phoning and beeping here, and I'll be back on Tuesday. I love you, Lady Rob. Also, the tile guy said he could do it next week once we got all the painting done. Promise me you'll like this shade of white this time. Ha ha. So another kind of piece of the puzzle, a clue perhaps, whether or not that is an authentic note or he is just trying to set up some sort of alibi for him not knowing why she was gone. That's uh, the piece of evidence that he leaves. And I kind of wondered if the police just said he isn't a suspect so he'd cooperate and he'd come down there and talk to them. Maybe that was a strategy. Right. Like, we just want to talk. He couldn't be a suspect <laughs> at this point. 
her friend remembers that she had recently been at Rosemary's place and that she didn't mention anything about getting new tile. Her friends believe that the note was planted and uh, to lead and steer investigators away from Robert and the search for Rosemary. They are convinced that he had done something to Rosemary. In the beginning, Robert would just insult Rosemary verbally, according to her friends, but um, about her weight, for example, but things only got worse and it turned violent. One incident was documented in 1997. Rosemary sustained injuries to her cheek and eye, but Robert says it was an accident and he pled no contest. So I, at this point, was like, were they ever happily married? I mean, to my knowledge, they got together that year or married that year. And they said it only got worse, but like, it got worse like very soon, like very early on in their relationship. Right. Yeah. And we never really heard about a honeymoon phase. We never hear friends or family describe Rosemary as super happy or, you know, really smitten with him. It's just kind of a quick relationship that goes downhill fast. Maybe the honeymoon phase was when they were still lying to each other or he was lying to her online. Right. Like, according to Lee, seeing each other in real life. Rosemary asked for the charges to be dropped so I guess that was crucial too for him to get away with this um this was three weeks before they got married so yeah I, th I guess we're right right I mean if this is the situation you're in in your relationship even before you got married I mean why are you getting married not trying to blame her obviously but oof, not not the relationship you you hope for anybody to be in According to Rosemary's friend, Robert kept promising her that he wouldn't do it again and that he'd change. In 1996, he pleaded guilty to domestic battery of um, his last wife. He claims that it was an unfortunate misunderstanding, whatever that is. So we learn that about his past and we learn more about his past. And in 1975, he served five years in prison for involuntary manslaughter. Back then, he killed his girlfriend's 18-month-old child, and he claims he took the rap for someone else um, who killed the child. The local press was on scene when Robert talked to investigators in front of the condo. He talked to the press in the pool area, and this is when Rosemary disappeared, and uh, so a few weeks later, he claims to miss her so bad and cries, if you want to call that cry, but not really. He begs for someone with information to come forward. He, quote, said, I'd rather be dead than anything ever happened to her. He reveals he last saw Rosemary the night of her disappearance at around 7 p.m. So, I guess, do we buy this? How convincing was he? Um, not very convincing. They even have the friends on there remarking that he was trying to cry, but no tears were actually coming out. And uh, the news crews are pretty good to zoom in on his face, and you can see him making the motions of crying, but yeah, there is no tears coming out. It looks like a, a pretty poor C-minus acting job. She support supposedly met people that night. And he didn't expect to see her that night again. So I guess he didn't respect her, uh, expect her to return that night. He explains that they were swingers. The closest friends dispute the swinger story. Uh, one of the journalists covering her case say that, said that he never found any proof that they were swingers, only that Robert and his girlfriend Leslie, his girlfriend Leslie were. Police found blood traces on a piece of carpet from the condo, and Robert claims it came from her knee injury at work, and that she fell a couple times. So no, does that even this... sound believable? <laughs> no, this is not sounding believable at all. Um, her boss will say that uh, he covered up the injury with a little band-aid and he remembers that it was basically a minor scrape. This is not an injury that would have been pouring 
blood from it days after it happened. So um, it seems like Robert is just trying to capitalize on this small incident that she had at work to explain why investigators were able to find some blood. Um, there's also some other telling clues. Uh, a friend of Rosemary's remembers that that day Rosemary had actually asked her if she thought that Robert was plotting to kill her. Robert and his girlfriend start to talk to a lawyer to help them with all the negative press that they're getting after these allegations are coming to light in TV and newspapers, but they are advised to get separate counsel. Rosemary's boss also offers a $10,000 reward to keep her case alive and to, you know, encourage people to come forward with information. Now, just after Rosemary was missing for about a month, Robert moved out of the condo that they were staying in and took all of her stuff, and he leaves town with Leslie, and one and a half years after her disappearance, a psychic calls police, and they search a local pond with divers, but no surprise here, Alina, they find nothing. That is pretty typical whenever the psychics call in with tips and they don't tend to really not a pan disappeared out. case without a psychic right not that's a disappeared right case exactly without a psychic <laughs> kind of just a distraction here for them but yeah no findings come out of that yeah. meanwhile robert and leslie travel around the country and they finally settle in redding california and in 2005 they have a child together but then on August 25th of 2008, Robert threatens Leslie, and Leslie says that he put a knife to her throat and said that if you say anything, I'll kill you, and I'll kill myself and our daughter. So in September of that same year, 2008, she calls her attorney from nine years ago that she had in Florida when they were trying to deal with all that negative press, and she told him that for the first time in nine years, she had the opportunity to be away from Robert for a longer time and that she was ready to come forward. And she tells him what she had actually told him nine years ago, but he had to keep quiet about for all of these years because of attorney-client privilege. So investigators fly to Washington to meet Leslie at a family reunion, and she tells investigators that he called her several times that night, that Robert did, insisting that she would come over to his condo. And he shows her that he killed Rosemary and demands that she helps him get rid of the body and clean up the condo. And he tells Leslie, however, that it was an accidental stabbing. So she says that she helped with the cover-up. According to her, her attorney, it was because she was scared of Robert. So... For nine years, this attorney is sitting on this information, and so apparently is Leslie. What do you think of the fact that it took so long for her to, to finally open up to police about this? I don't really get it. Like, her stating that, you know, this is the first time she was away from him for a longer time, and I guess I'm like, well, now I could, you know, think about it, and I came to the realization I do want to come clean and, you know, tell what really happened, but... Is that really the first time in nine years you could get away? Like, you stayed with this guy who you were supposedly were so scared of and you decided to have a child with him. And I know, I mean, I'm sure it can be hard to get away from abusive partners, but really there was no other, like, earlier opportunity for you in all these nine years. I don't know. I'm not saying she murdered her or she was like a huge part in it I just think she could have come cleaner clean earlier I mean she talked to her attorney by herself I guess so wouldn't that have been a good point to you know when she told him what actually happened to get in witness protection or whatever she needed so Robert couldn't harm her um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know how much I buy into the, I was so scared and I think she, she definitely incriminated herself too. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm sure she, there was some fear there, but the fact that she told a lawyer about it nine years earlier, I mean, obviously she was okay to tell someone about it and yeah, the likelihood that 
she just had no chance to get away from him over nine years while they had a child together and all of this. Um, it certainly doesn't seem too believable. So once police get word of this, they arrest Robert for the threats that he has made to Leslie, uh, but he denies the allegations. And while Robert is in jail, Leslie flies down to Florida to show police where Rosemary's body can be found. And sure enough, they had buried her body along the Suwannee River, and the body was found in a green plastic tub, just like the one that was listed on that Walmart receipt. Police charge Robert with first-degree murder for Rosemary's death. But this is when Robert starts to change the story a bit, and he claims that Leslie is actually the one who killed Rosemary. And during this trial, Robert defends himself in court, which we know never really works out for the people who try to defend themselves on the stand. And Robert is ultimately found guilty because of, in large part, the testimony of Leslie, who takes the stand and opens up about everything that she knows. So he gets a life sentence, and Robert was already in some poor health, and he eventually dies in prison in December of 2018. So kind of a interesting case from the very beginning. It seems like there's a, a clear suspect, even though police took a while to actually label him as a suspect. Um, they, I guess, just were kind of cautious about that until nine years later when they had finally a confession that they could go and, and use against him, and that seemed to be the ticket. In this case, we don't learn as much about the um, perspective from the police as we do in some other cases, and so I wonder if their main issue for a long time was that they didn't have her body, because in some cases, even if they think they know who did it, they know it wouldn't be enough for a conviction because there is no body and um yeah i wonder if that was the case here too so even if, even though it took leslie those nine years um i'm sure her family rosemary's family and friends are relieved to have to finally know what happened and to be able to bury her and uh, have a place to grieve and get some closure so in a way, yeah, we're, we can still be glad that she decided to come forward. And she gets away. Like, she gets no... She works out a deal. Like, she's not in prison for this or in any trouble. Which I think you can debate about whether that is okay or not. Yeah. Definitely must have been a relief for the friends involved. Um, you know, to have a hunch for so long and kind of be sure what happened but not be able to prove it must have been so frustrating um and i'm sure they were very relieved when they got the truth and were able to locate her body and and finally bring her home until next time have a good night